we're here at the Mid America Farm Expo, and this is uh, our 50 plus show that we're doing here this year. It's a little bit different. We have about uh, two thirds of normal of what uh, vendor size is, but uh, people here are still coming to the show. We have some excellent programs. Uh, today we had uh, national legislative uh, update and then a state legislative update this afternoon with Mike Beam. Tomorrow will be a speaker, uh, Mr. Bennett, will be here talking about markets uh, morning and afternoon. And then on Thursday, we've got a program on uh, some of the new technology that's out for farm machinery and everything else. But we have uh, exhibits still in all the buildings here, uh, just not quite as many as what we've had in the past. We're hoping that our numbers will be back up in the future. And uh, But the uh, exhibitors that are here, I've heard good things. They've been selling things and moving product and things such as that. But uh, a lot of challenges this year, not only for uh, us, but also for the exhibitors. Uh, they're having a tough time getting machinery. Uh, they have a shortage of you know, metal and very expensive metal. They can't get enough laborers. So it's uh, been quite a bit of challenge for them. So. What goes into setting up an expo like this? Well, I mean, we got lots of uh, things that we have to do. The committee works on... Uh, you know, arranging speakers. We also have to book all the exhibits and everything and arrange for, uh, you know, mapping out where we're going to put spaces and those types of things. And so it's a lot of planning that goes on for the full year ahead of time to, to the next show comes along. So Has it always been here at this event center? Well, the 40-some years that I've been involved, yes. The first show was held across the street over by Kidwood Hall in the parking lot. And uh, it was just local manufacturing companies here in Salina that uh, brought their exhibits. And then it gradually grew over the years to other companies coming here. Uh, and then in the uh, late 70s, we moved from across the street into the buy center here when it was uh, constructed. And so that added a, much more, a lot more space for us. Um, who are some of the biggest vendors here? Well, as far as the largest number of spaces here, uh, John Deere, Prairie Land, their local dealer has a large display out there. Uh, those and uh, Lang Diesel has. Uh, Can Equip used to have a large display. This year they're not doing any shows, but uh, some of those large dealerships that have farm equipment have been their biggest displayers. Yes. So, um, is this one of the biggest expos of its kind in the state? Uh, we are probably uh, second or third in the state uh, as far as the size. Uh, uh, at one time, 3i was quite a bit bigger than us. I don't know if it's that much bigger anymore. Um, and then we would be one of the bigger ones. There is a big show in Kansas City. And then there are several smaller shows, that three or four of them that go on here in the state, too, that are smaller than we are. Are we getting people from all over the state to come here? Or? The vast majority of our crowd will be coming from uh, around this area through northwest Kansas here to the show, and some out of Nebraska, too. So. Now, does this, um, this, having this kind of expo hosted in Salina, is this a really big um, benefit to the town? Sure, it's a great thing for Salina, bringing people in here to uh, not only to use restaurants and motels and also uh Spending money when they get here for gas and everything else. So, yeah, it's a good benefit for the town, you bet. What other kind of events for 2021 does the uh, Chamber of Commerce have on the docket? Well, I mean, the other other event that our committee does, the Ag Committee does, is will be the dairy show that we will do in August. It's a statewide dairy show that brings people here from across the state to show dairy cattle. Um, what was some of the preparation of this event? I mean, we met uh, at least once a month uh, as a committee, the, the three or four chairmen that we, and we would sit down and discuss what we want to do for programs, what things that we have to take care of as far as electricity, water, booth spaces, and those types of things. And we met a couple hours each month for several months, and then we've had the full committee together a couple times to go over details and everything before coming here and doing this event, yeah. Okay. Is there anything, um, is there anything different about this year other than maybe the COVID thing? <laughs> because the, the mask would be the big, big thing that's different. Uh, 
as protocols for health issues and those types of things would be the other thing, yeah. Is there anything you wanted to say that you think we haven't covered? Well, the only thing I, you know, one of the important things to keeping this show going is volunteers. And we have an excellent group of volunteers that come here and put their time in and help with this show to make it happen every year. Um, how do you volunteer here? You get a hold of the chamber and tell them that you'd be interested in uh, helping with the farm show or any of the chamber activities. And they keep a great list of volunteers that want to help and get involved to help support Salina. Uh, out here for the farm show, uh, we have this ideal combine here. It's uh, Fent builds this combine. Uh, this is a class nine machine on tracks. Uh, has a lot of capacity to it. It's got, it's a twin rotor design, so it handles a lot more throughput uh, than just a single rotor machine does. There's two rotors in there, 24 inches in diameter, 16 feet long, run from the front up here all the way to the back, moves your crop through there. We have what we call an ideal balance pan in there that's two pans underneath those rotors, so it separates that residue and the front one funnels it to the center of your shoe. The back one funnels it to the outside of the shoe so you get a more even mat across your cleaning sieves. Uh, we build them in Bringanza, Italy. Uh, as soon as, well, the tracks come from Jackson, Minnesota. Uh, some of the gearboxes and electronics come from Heston, Kansas. Uh, back axle comes from Nokia, Finland. The cab and the engine come from Germany. Uh, as soon as we get to selling a few more here, we'll build them in Heston, Kansas. Uh, we do a lot. All of our hay stuff is built in Heston, Kansas. Uh, the momentum planter back here, the Fent planter, is uh, built in uh, Beloit, Kansas. Sunflower tillage is built in Beloit, Kansas. Uh, so yeah, we do quite a bit uh, here in Kansas. You guys gonna put John Deere out of business? Yeah. Nah, they can still stick around and pick up the small stuff. What else does Ideal make? Uh, I, we do Fent tracks. So the Ideal is the name for the Fent combine. Okay. So the planter is a Fent planter, but we call it a momentum. And then we have the Fent tractors. And worldwide, Fent is number one in tractors. Okay. How many years have you been here? This is my first year to be here. So, yeah, and I've been from right over there to right here. So I can't tell you a whole lot about the show. Okay. <laughs> um, do shows like this really help with exposure? For yes, they do. Because it gives people a chance to kick the tires as you want, you know, look it over, climb over it. You see a lot more than you do on a YouTube video. Um, so, yeah, they help tremendously. And this is only the second show that I've done since COVID since a little over a year ago. Yeah. So how are you liking Salina so far? I like it. This is not, we've been steady until the rain came up just a while ago. We were steady all morning long and, and I thought they've had a great turnout. Yeah, we probably came in just a little bit late, huh? Yeah. Are you guys gonna be here for the, the other two days? Uh-huh, I'll be here tomorrow and then I've gotta leave, but okay. yeah, be back tomorrow. Right. A lot of people don't realize that Agco, which owns Massey and Fent, and, and Valtra and Heston Hay Equipment, uh, the rest of the world, we're number one or number two. We're only number three in North America. <laughs> so we sell more overseas than we do here. But we have plants in China, Germany, Italy, uh, all over the place. Huh. Yeah, she will. Let's, let's take a little look here. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm liking this this kind of you know semicircle door it's got going on. Very actually pretty spacious, and you can see I mean there's a huge you know field of vision here, um, especially on this right side. I think it's very interesting. Um, you got all this this whole control system. I mean, I'm seeing like just tons. You know you got some blade options. You have some blower options. Um, I'm seeing some speed with the turtle and the rabbit icons. Classic, of course, and then the wipers. 
and even some aux controls. It looks like this has a uh, <laughs> Bluetooth radio up at the top with some uh, AC options as well. And I'm seeing just a lot of controls. There's a ladder option. I'm seeing you could probably bring something down. And even if you look behind me here, um, and this may be a little hard to see from uh, the point of view uh, from down there, but you can you can see kind of everything behind. Uh, it looks like a whole just different area that you can probably get to. Um, somehow or at least see what's going on and if you needed to uh, adjust anything that would help too uh, but yeah I'm, I'm enjoying it. it's got uh, just a massive wiper uh, which I would think you would need and it's got windows on the side you know two rear views with an additional fuel division rear view with it um, and I'm seeing here yeah it even has a bit of a visor that you can pull down um, I would assume if it gets a little too bright so you can still see what you're doing uh, but this vehicle is absolutely massive, and, and you can definitely get a sense for that just sitting in the cockpit here. Uh, that's definitely what it feels like. <laughs> um, I'm liking the armrest, though. Definitely helps a lot. It's got a couple charging ports. Um, a few screens here, which I would assume when you turn on would just give you a lot more statistics and data about what you're doing, which would be very, very useful. Uh, tell us a little about, about yourself and what is Grass and Grain. Okay, well, Grass and Grain is a weekly published ag-based newspaper. We've been in business for 67 years, and we do publish once a week. Uh, we have about 10,000 subscribers across the state of Kansas. Um, we cover all of this region as well as a few other states, and we just learned an interesting statistic. We actually have one person who subscribes to our paper that is in the North Pole, which is kind of we assume that they have some background in this area. <laughs> but. Um, where are you guys based out of? We're based out of Manhattan, Kansas. Yep. How long have you guys been around? 67 years, I think, is this our publication. What's your guys' like uh, purpose or mission statement? Um, I mean, just to spread the ag news. Uh, everything based on agriculture is in our paper. Okay. Um. And uh, do you guys come to this event like every year yep we've been coming here for quite a long time i don't know if it's every year but probably so All right. is an event like this um pretty helpful for your business like getting the word out and oh yeah for sure and also it's a good service to our customers because we let them renew their subscriptions while they're here too we offer them free stuff for doing so and it makes it easier for them to remember that they need to resubscribe and so they don't let it lapse and one other thing I'll mention while we're here, we are doing our very own show in, in, in Manhattan in September. So anybody that can make it to that, that'd be great too. Okay, where's that going to be? That's going to be at the Riley County Fairgrounds in Manhattan, September 29th and 30th. You guys a pretty pretty sizable operation? How many people you got work for you? Uh, no, we're a small staff. Uh, there's only seven of us. Um, just pretty well-oiled machine. Sounds like you guys get a lot of news for a whole week. Is that like day in, day out, just working around the clock? Yep, pretty much. Uh, our editor <laughs> does a really good job of making sure she gets everything in there she needs to. Uh, she was here earlier in the week. She would have been a really good one to talk to, but she she does a really good job, and we get told multiple times here at the show how much people enjoy reading her content. Okay. Um, do you guys do online exclusive stuff? or? We, our paper is actually published online, too, for our readers. So if you subscribe, they get it as well. And it's the same thing. What other events are you going to be hitting around the state? So we usually do the Topeka Farm Show. Um, Topeka and Salina are the only, and the Wichita Farm Show are the only ones we really go to. So with the Topeka one being canceled, this was really our chance to get out and say, here we are, and come get your subscriptions done, and say thank you to all our customers for coming. Do you guys um, do you guys have quite a few subscribers in Salina? Yeah, we do. This is a really good area for us. I don't know exactly the numbers, but it's a good area. You start to recognize faces after a while. Yeah, for sure. We we do all the time. Like lots of people, our normal farm show goers, they come and go all the time.
So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what, uh, what your business is, what you're doing here. My name is Shannon Campbell, and my husband and I own Steria Bakery. We're from Denver, Colorado, and we come to the Salina, uh, the Mid-America Farm Show every single year. We have for many years now. Uh, we, we make and sell about 15 different kinds of gourmet bread, uh, apple strudel, stoll, and um, bread dip. Um, it's f fabulous. Every single thing is made by hand from scratch by my family, myself, my husband, even our kids have grown up working in the bakery. And this is how we sell it. We do farmer's markets in the summertime, a little closer to home, and then the rest of the months of the year we do trade shows. So we're, we're glad to be back at work and putting COVID behind us, and, and so we hope you guys will come on out and see us at the farm show. Um, what's your biggest seller? Um, our most popular breads are the walnut cranberry and the lemon mint white chocolate. Uh, what kind of bread do you make that you can't get anywhere else? Oh, well, have you ever heard of a lemon mint white chocolate bread before? <laughs> I think we created it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um. Another really cool thing about our bread is that we use flour that's unbromated. That means it doesn't contain um, a dough conditioner that's in most flour. It's called uh, potassium bromate. It's a known carcinogen that's banned in a lot of countries, but not ours. And uh, they don't even have to tell you it's in there. They don't have to put it on the label. Um, but when I found out about it, we went in search of flour that's unbromated because it's much better for you. So um, Denver is what, about seven and a half, eight hours away for you guys? It's about six. It's not that bad. Oh, I live on the east side, so it's, it's not that bad. What's the farthest you guys go from home? Houston. Twice a year we, we go to Houston. <laughs> What's your favorite place to go to? Got to be Salina, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to let our viewers know? We really appreciate all the years of, of the, the customers coming back again and again every year to buy uh, bread from us um, at, at the farm show. And we're excited to come back next year. fingerprints and oil, roll it, it comes right off. Don't do that with crazy. You can't roll it. You'll be glued. Everything on my table I glue. I got a powder. See this white stuff? I do leaks in gas tanks, copper, PVC, radiators. I filled that nut and made it solid. Farmers love this. I drilled it and tapped it. Here. I put threads in there. So I made it solid in layers, drilled and tapped it. I do leaks in gas tanks, copper, PVC, radiators, I do it all. I use it on cuts. Yeah, so what I did is I put my card under there, powder glue, powder glue. See the powder? It's aluminum oxide. That's my filler. So I made it solid, and then just a regular tap and drill, put threads in it. I did that in wood. Whoever thought you'd put threads in wood? I mean, I'm actually doing it in the powder and the glue, right? Now, rungs in your chairs at home, they wobble, you get a gap. Keep them in there, put the glue, the powder in there, you'll never get them apart. You know what the best part of the glue is? Get your fingers stuck. You ever do that with crazy glue? Oh, yeah. yeah, it works well, doesn't it? How'd you get the crazy glue apart? Mine? Just roll it, it comes off. I can put a drop of glue on her phone, she can let go, it'll be hands free. <laughs> One ounce bottle for 20 bucks in the last six, seven years. Online it's double. You get the powder, my cleaner remover, and the glue in my kit. I do the whole set for you. It'll last five to seven years. Farm Show Magazine did a nice article about us. 
and I've been at this show for years. There's nothing like it. Okay, so tell us a little about, a bit about yourself and your business here. Uh, my name is Mariah Harris, and I'm with AgriTrails Co-op. We are located in Hope, Kansas. We actually have 16 locations from Navarre all the way south to Tampa, to Council Grove, to Gypsum. So we carry a couple of counties there in the center of the state. What, what exactly is it your business does? AgriTrails is a cooperative, so we do a little bit of everything from um, animal feed, which is kind of my specialty, to agronomy, to um, fuel and energy. Um, so a little bit of everything in the ag sector. Um, how many uh, kind of farm expo shows, you know, fairs, events that you hit up? Actually, this is our first one. We're kind of newbies. JD, our other salesperson, and I are kind of newbies to the whole thing. We've done them in the past um, with other cooperatives. Um, previous members or, or employees have done them. Um, this is our first one since last year's was canceled. So, um, and this one's the closest to home. So it makes sense for us to be here. You plan on hitting any others up uh, this following this coming year? I don't think so. I think with this one just being so close and us being so centrally located, this is kind of the main one we are going to attend to. You think it's going to be pretty pretty good for your business, all this exposure? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've talked to multiple people. I've booked some mineral. JD's got some extra um, sales and some propane and energy. So I think it's been helpful to be so close to home and, and getting sales that way. Awesome. Um, is there anything you want to say to our viewers before we sign off? Anything about your business or anything you expected we would cover but we didn't? Come visit AgriTrails and Hope or give us a call. We're on at agritrails.com. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.